We have some states awaiting for me in the next few days, but then we're coming to Florida. And two weeks tonight, you will send a message to the nation and the world that America's greatest days are yet to come. Marco Rubio striking an optimistic tone after a Super Tuesday that saw him winning his first state in Minnesota, but only that state. The Florida senator telling supporters that the wind is at his back, but the headlines paint a different picture. Today's Washington Post reads, Trump owns Super Tuesday, but Cruz and Rubio see glimmers of hope. And Political Wire writes, Rubio left gasping after Super Tuesday. Let's bring in Corrine Jean-Pierre, strategist, and Pete Snyder, Fox News contributor and a former Republican candidate for lieutenant governor of Virginia. Uh, Pete, it is said that one of the effects of Super Tuesday is to give the also-rans, primarily Cruz and Rubio, just enough victories to keep them in the race. Do you see it that way? Well, look, I, I think there's no getting those two out of the race or even John Kasich or Ben Carson at this point in time. But then, then know, it Marco, goes to Trump, doesn't it? Uh, it certainly could. It's certainly looking like that. Look, I, I like both Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio. I think they're both great conservatives. Uh, I just find the path very difficult from them for here on out. And you're hearing all of Washington doing a little, uh, you know, bedwetting right now and talking about a brokered convention. I just don't see it happening. John, this is like getting the warlords in Iraq right now together to try to figure out how to uh, topple ISIS. It's hard. These guys don't like each other. Uh, it's very, it would take a, a confluence of events to happen for them to get together in a back room that doesn't exist to work out a brokered convention on how they're going to stop Trump. Just not going to happen. Yeah, well, the, the, if, if there are warlords in this race, if I can continue that uh, analogy, uh, Donald Trump is the leader. Kareen, here's what Politico writes. Mike Allen says, uh, Rubio bombed in his chance to be the alternative. Turns out doing a cheap impression of Trump's cheap tricks does not a winner make. This was the week when we saw uh, Marco Rubio kind of trying to throw some of Trump's own medicine back at him. Did it backfire or did, was it simply not effective? Yeah, well, I, th I think it did. I think it did, John. But look, I think the, there's so much rich irony in, uh, in uh, Rubio winning Minnesota, uh, a state that he talked about with Jesse Ventura comparing him to Trump just a couple of days ago at his town hall. And also, you know, Minnesota being so liberal, going with candidate. So I think, yes, I think that Rubio, uh, it hurt him some because he didn't get any of the Trump voters um, by attacking Trump. If anything, they went elsewhere. Uh, but the one good thing that, that, that did happen is that a lot of the late, uh, the late deciders broke his way. So I think it did hurt him well, at the uh, end. Here's how the Cook Political Report sees it. They write, yes, he can say he won a state Minnesota, but at the end of the night, Rubio came in third place almost everywhere else. The fact that Rubio lost Virginia, a state that is tailor-made for a candidate with his profile, was a particularly harsh blow. It is really hard to see how he wins his home state of Florida. Whatever hope the Rubio team had of becoming the consensus Trump alternative died last night. Pete, you know the voters of Virginia pretty well. Why did I do. Marco Rubio do better there? Look, I think Marco Rubio did a great job closing a 20-point gap with uh, a week or two to go. Uh, he certainly won over millennials and, and young professionals in northern Virginia, uh, did well in the Richmond area. But uh, Donald Trump ran up the score in South Side and Southwest, where they're having a tougher economy. His message resonated there. He even cleaned up in Massachusetts with the Duncan crowd, largely in you know the Worcester and, and Lowell area, uh, where it's it's tougher economic times. So Donald Trump clearly has a message right now that's that's resonating with folks that don't think that Washington's working for him, don't think that the economy's working for him, and he's trying to pivot and go after the general election right now by saying, hey, look, Hillary Clinton did nothing to solve income inequality and you got to give me a chance so I, I think he's already looking towards November well he's pinning his hopes on Florida Kareen uh, but Donald Trump is ahead there in the latest polls and Trump you know stakes his own claim uh, to Florida with his business dealings there and with a lot of expatriate New Yorkers living there I mean you're here as the Democratic representative which guy would you like to see win the state of Florida <laughs> given its electoral prominence come November 
Yeah, it's just, as we know, Florida, 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 it's all about Florida. Um, look, I think that, uh, I, in, in, as it pertains to Marco Rubio, he's going to have a really tough time. Clearly, the math, the delegate math is against him. It doesn't add up. Um, and, uh, and he's just going to have a really difficult time. He's underwater in, Flo in Florida. And so I just don't know how, how he gets there. And also, while the Republicans are trying to figure out, you know, who is the candidate that they're going to finally coalesce behind and push forward to face most likely Secretary Hillary Clinton, on the Democratic side, we have the opportunity to hone our message and continue to build the coalition that you saw coming out of uh, last night's primary most results, building for, for Hillary Clinton. I think Clinton. I heard Corrine say that she doesn't want to face either of them, right? I mean, <laughs> Marco Rubio would be a nightmare for Democrats, and, and Donald Trump is the great unknown. I mean, you know, he, I was a wrestler in college, and you always wanted to wrestle against a traditional opponent that you can train against, not some wild man man who you never knew because it was going to happen. So uh, Look, he's been a heat-seeking yeah. missile out there. I was a wrestler well, in high school, and I just <laughs> never got that much strategy. But uh, yeah. all right, Kareem, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm yep. sorry. <laughs> okay. We'll uh, have you back another time.